Hello Internet, I am Ru and welcome back to our review series of The Legend of Zelda games. Last time we took a look at Majora's Mask and talked about how it was the first direct sequel in The Legend of Zelda franchise. But did you know that there is another sequel? Yes, the Oracle series. It features the Link you took control of in A Link to the Past and to be honest, I didn't know about that. And as a huge Link to the Past fan, of course, I have to play those games. Almost a year after Majora's Mask's release, Oracle of Season and Oracle of Ages hit the shelf for the Game Boy Color. It was the return to the original top-down view of the Legend of Zelda series, such as Legend of Zelda and A Link to the Past. The game featured new items, the option to upgrade your existing items and even featured rings. This was something like an RPG approach to Zelda game. It wasn't that big of a hit with the fans, but I personally didn't mind it so much. You could play each game independently, but Nintendo added the secrets function. Once you beat a game, you would get a code. If you used that code in the beginning of the other game, you would continue playing with your previous character. This won't only change up the game a little bit, it also adds an extra boss and some extra stories. And I think that's really cool. I don't know why Nintendo isn't doing this anymore. The game got mostly positive reviews from reviewers and gamers, but somehow drifted into obscurity in the last years. So, without further ado, let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Oracle of Seasons opens with our hero returning to Castle Hyrule, heeding the call of the Triforce. That's a strange booty call. On arrival, our hero is whisked away to the distant world of Holodrum. Holodrum, I don't know how to pronounce it. Here he is found by the dancer Din and the trope. Hmm, this looks like a fun time. Din's dancing raises one's spirits. Ha, <laughs> I'm sure it raises something else. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. Nice. They celebrate with awkward dancing and beer until the General of Darkness, Onox, crashes the party and kidnaps Din. Turns out that Din is the title-giving Oracle of Seasons, and Onox is planning to bury her at the Temple of Seasons. Why? To bring chaos and destruction to Holodrum. Why does it always have to be destruction of everything? Can't the bad guys, I don't know, just want to open a McDonald's or something? With Din gone, the Seasons are now out of control and changing randomly. I don't know about you, but I like this idea. I mean, there wasn't much else to do for Nintendo after they explored time travel. Waking up yet again, this lady, Impa, tells us that we have to talk to the guardian of Holodrum, the Mako Tree. And she can't go on her own because she's hurt. Well, she walks just fine for me. Lion bitch. Now our hero Ru finally gets a sword and meets the Mako Tree. Great, another big tree. Wait, is he sleeping? Look at that guy, he looks stoned off his ass. For Cranky plays it. But the Mako Tree has some useful advice for us. To bring balance back to the seasons and rescue Din, we have to find 8 essences, scattered all around Holodrum. With the first stop being the Gnarly Root Dungeon. Arriving here we quickly learn that all our favorite enemies from A Link to the Past make a return. Skellymans, Choo Choo's and Boomerang Throwing Goblins. This dungeon also provides us with our first new item, the Seed Satchel. Hey look at that, a new item! I wasn't expecting that. We're actually going to find a few new items we never saw before in the Zelda franchise in this game, so A for effort, Nintendo! The Gnarly Root Dungeon shows us what we can expect from the following dungeons. They are orientated on the dungeons of A Link to the Past, but this time around the puzzles seem a little bit more difficult. Good job! Now equipped with our Ember Seeds, we can face the first boss. HOLY HELL IT'S A DRAGON! Now we're talking! And wait, I can't defeat him with the dungeon item? I'm seriously surprised. Hmm, that was pretty easy. Well, it was the first dungeon, what did I expect? To progress further, we first have to stalk this little girl here on our way home. <laughs> she leads us to Sabrosia, a secret underground world. It does look a little bit like the Dark World in A Link to the Past. I think I like it here. And man, do the Sabrosians love the ore chunks. I don't care. Shut up about those ore chunks. 
Shut up! 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 Here we also find the Temple of Seasons, where the Spirit of Seasons gives us the Rod of Seasons. Seasons, seasons, seasons. A lot of seasons in this game. And the Rod of Seasons is a magical staff that gives us the power to control the seasons. Well, at least later on. For now we're stuck with winter. Winter. No. Oh no. It's so slippy. Slippy. Snow and ice everywhere. Slippy. Slippy. <laughs> Slippy. <laughs> always ice. <laughs> so slippy. Slippy. Are you gay? So slippy. Slippy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, thanks, Boomer. I'm <clears throat> sorry about that. So we use our newfound ability to control the seasons to reach the next dungeon. Hmm. I wonder what the game tries to tell me here. Fudge. No wonder this place is called Snake's Remains. There are snakes everywhere. But aren't they called rogues? Hmm, that's right, Boomer. Have a chocolate microchip cookie. Hmm, maybe the end boss of the dungeon is a giant snake? Nope, it's a Dodongo. What the hell, Nintendo? Hmm, how do we get to the next dungeon? Uh, let's take a look. Wh what? That's... That's a kangaroo! Oh my god, Boomer, look! It's a kangaroo! Starting sarcasm module. Wow! Meet Ricky, one of the three companions you will meet and can choose from during the Oracle games. All three of them have special abilities to aid you in your journey. Ricky can jump up cliffs and has a bitchin' cool tornado punch. I can do that too. Mosh, the bear with ridiculously tiny wings can fly through the air for a short amount of time and has a ground stop attack. And Dimitri, the dog helps you safely over bodies of water and he can swim up waterfalls. Of course did a big old kangaroo bro here. Look, I'm in his pooch! It's a reception! I would love to feel you in my pooch. No homo. Uh, Alright, let's just act like that never happened. So let's get our Rod of Seasons fully upgraded. <laughs> my Rod has been blessed with a Spring Dew. Nothing much happens in the next three dungeons, except for Aghanim showing up again. Now I'm gonna finish you off, Rizzet! Get it? Because he threatened to finish me off in A Link to the Past? Okay, and I also have to carry this dude around for some reason. Eh, that's not the hat I was expecting yet. Alright, so far so good. Let's see what the last dungeon has to offer. Ice! Well, fuck you two game. Huh, why don't we take a look at the side quest in this game? Hmm, I have to fulfill a trading sequence. That's not so bad. I won't go into detail, but it involves this Sabrosian making soup for us and this guy having his pussy stuck on a tree. Come down there, Mr. Mushy! No, I'm a squirrel now! As a reward for completing the trading sequence, we can claim the Noble Sword. It's golden, so I like it. Well, now we're gonna talk about the end game, so Boomer. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <sighs> Seems like I have to get him recouraged and brave through the last dungeon. Said and done, the Marco Tree calls out to us again to meet him and. Whoa, dude! Did you get us a bounce? God damn munchies. He gifts us the Marco Seed to penetrate evil forces. <laughs> penetrate. And now it's time to hold Onox responsible for his evil deeds. And that boss fight is actually difficult. I'm not kidding. The second phase after it turned into a motherfucking dragon. It took me an hour to beat. But I did it eventually. So then is safe, the seasons return back to normal and everything is lovely once again. Not quite. The last cutscene shows us the Twin Rovers and they talk about something like a flame of destruction and the return of evil. Hmm, I wonder who that is going to be. What else is there to say about the game? It is a good game. Noticed something? Yeah, I didn't say it is a good Zelda game. It certainly isn't bad, but Oracle of Seasons doesn't really stand out from all the other Zelda games. A Link to the Past was the first big Zelda game, Ocarina of Time was the first 3D Zelda and Majora's Mask perfected the time travel mechanic. 
Even the earlier published Link's Awakening was the first Game Boy Zelda game. Our Cliff Seasons is just... there. It is like that weird uncle everybody has, you know, the one that only shows up on Christmas. He's kinda nice and only calls you chief, not in a creepy way, but you don't really think about him until somebody brings him up. But you still love him because he is part of the family. Yes, the mechanic of changing the season seems cool, but later in the game it comes off a little bit... gimmicky. The three companions are a nice alternative to Epona, but don't really stick to you. I hate that guy. The game looks good for Game Boy Color title, but also a little bit outdated, especially if you take in consideration that the Game Boy Advance came out a month later after the game was released. It is also kinda short. Without the side quest, it took me about 5 hours to beat the game. It was a nice effort of Nintendo to give us another Zelda game until Wind Waker came out. Hmm. Do I see a parallel there? Oracles of Seasons is a good opportunity for people that never played a 2D Zelda game. If you like it, you will love A Link to the Past or the original one. If you play it and just don't feel like it, you'd better stick to the 3D titles. And this concludes my review of Oracle of Seasons. Maybe my opinion changes after playing Oracle of Ages again. Maybe not, who knows? Only time can tell. Heh, <laughs> get it? Because Oracle of Ages is about time travel again? I would like to travel back in time to prevent you from seeing that. Eh, <sighs> me too. Well, see you in the next video.